After taking off from Cameron, the aircraft and crew usually headed north. After a two-hour flight, they were over Way's Perfume River, marking the point where they turned west towards their routine operating area above the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which ran along the Lao side of the Vietnamese border. Many of their missions would be flown over the fence. Along the way, the mission controller would pass out the mission working materials to the operators. The operators would then set about calibrating their equipment, while the electronics repairmen would note any deficiencies they encountered. Once completed, the crew would eat their box lunches and relax until they reached their destination. Actual on-station time was usually eight to eight and a half hours and normally flown at altitudes of 8,500 to 10,500 feet. Although missions were not routinely flown on oxygen, the crew carried oxygen masks and the oxygen system was kept full and operational. During the missions, the operators listened on various frequency groups for anything of intelligence value. Their consoles each had a small oscilloscope-type screen that would show if any enemy transmission were being made anywhere in a given frequency spread. When a transmission spike showed on the screen, the operator would tune his receiver to check it out. If it was determined to be of value, the operator would start recording the Morse code or voice on tape and manually write it down at the same time. The mission operator could tell when any operator station was recording and could monitor what each was listening. If either he or the operator thought they had a hot one, the controller could transmit the hard copy via secure communications link down to a mission control center on the ground. There, intelligence officers analyzed the information for strike or counterinsurgency operations. After leaving the mission area, the aircraft would fly to Da Nang to take on a partial fuel load. There also, the mission controller would hand over a pouch containing the mission tape reels and notes to an armed courier who would sign for them. The courier would then take the data to the 8th Radio Research Station for decoding and analysis, then send it to other intelligence agencies, including the Army Security Agency, the Central Intelligence Agency, the National Security Agency, MACVS-2, and others directly concerned. After leaving Da Nang, they would fly down the coast to Cameron, using all four engines to make the best time. Except for the on-duty pilots, the rest of the crew would take a well-deserved nap. Approaching Cameron, they'd be awakened to take their landing stations. Some 16 hours after starting their work day, they would finally taxi to the NAF ramp and shut down their engines. After a debriefing session, a meal, and a shower, most would retire to their bunks. Some would only enjoy a few hours of sleep, though. Due to a chronic shortage of operators and linguists, they would often have to fly again the next day.